Have you ever wondered how large monuments came to be from the past, like the pyramids? Well, now it's time to find out. In the game, Monuments by Keep Exploring Games, it plays two to four players, takes about, I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game, you're playing as an ancient civilization, attempting to build their fabulous monuments, whether it be Machu Picchu or the Colossus Tower. And as you do that, you're going to need land and space and resources. This game is a Civ game, which stands for Civilization Builder. You'll be attempting to gather things like food and metal and cattle to allow yourself to build factories and towns and these other barrackses that will then produce things like your planes or your ships or perhaps even more armies. And each player is going to have themselves equipped with unique starting abilities, starting actions, upgrade cards as you continue to build your monument because as you build it you become more powerful, all while at the same time eventually having to choose to attack your opponents using battle dice. If you can get enough grasp of land in the world, as well as build your monument to the highest level, that will trigger the end game. Players will end their scores, see how much they got based on this unique scoring method, which every player has their own unique uh, way of scoring bonus points, but the same method throughout. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner of the game Monuments. Can you build yours before the next player? This is the game Monuments and the components that lie within. Now, of course, this is a prototype, so it will look different than what you see here. Things like this will actually be a board. Things like these rivers will actually be attached to the map. And it's very likely that all the tokens here will be of a different type. But this is what I've got, and I will show you how it functions with these. First of all, there is the game board. This board is represented in four different continents or regions, and you'll be playing on them with your specific player. Uh, this is one, two, three, and four players, each with their own unique monument based on the area. Each monument is comprised of five different parts. It actually will come apart because you're going to start with no monument, and hopefully by the end of the game, build up to your fifth level. Additionally, you're going to have your own unique player color as well as army, a player board, and player cards. Let's go through the different types of player units. Like, for instance, you're going to have these, which are forts. You're going to have the towns. You're going to have these guys here. What are they called? They're called uh, factories. And then you're going to have your boats, your navy, you're going to have your air force, you're going to have soldiers, and you're going to have workers. Those are the main pieces for everybody. Everybody's going to get those units, but they're not, not likely going to get all the same type or amount of units of those types. Some players might start with more workers or more air or less air and vice versa. Uh, there also are going to be unique buildings for the different players. Uh, one player will start with different type of buildings than another. Another player might start with horses, and another one's going to get things like the ability to attack the ground area with naval units. These die here are battle die. They're going to have a blank side, a one and a two, which should be rolling based on power to try and eliminate your opponent's spaces on the board, pieces on the board, in which case you can go on those locations and take control of them. There are also going to be personal setups for every single player board, which is basically going to give you unique bonuses as you build your monument. Speaking of the monuments, there's also starting quests that you can pick up based on the monument's layer level, and these things are going to give you victory points throughout the game in order to basically have you win the game, hopefully, by the end of it, if you've completed them. Sometimes not completing them is going to be a bad thing, but generally you want to pick up as many as you can to complete as many as you possibly can as well. These are the personal player decks. Player decks are going to start off on this side here, I believe which is the brownish side or orangish side, and you can choose to upgrade them with an upgrade card and turn them into this green side here, which is going to give you unique, more powerful abilities of your cards. There's also your player board, which is going to have your bonus levels based on the bonuses that you choose. You're going to have completed and current quests on in progress. You'll have what you can build, how much it costs to build it, and a personal ability that every single player is going to get in the main game. However, the personal ability will be attached to the board, and these won't be these. They'll be actually actual player boards. These are your resources over here. You're going to have these little pigs, which are basically going to be called cattle or food, depending on what, what they want to call them. Uh, these over here are called wheat. These over here are called metal. And these over here are wood. And finally over here, you're going to have weapons. Weapons will basically be given to your workers to make them more powerful. They'll basically count as units that are armed and can fight 
in, in battle if need be. There are boats here that are neutral, but you're going to have to you spend resources to build them, and they'll let you carry your workers and whatnot across the sea with them. There are the rivers, of course, and then all the extra things I talked about previously. The other thing, only the other things you need to know about are the, there are different victory uh, co point cards. They all function the same way, like you're going to score points for each monument uh, piece you have, you're going to score points for all your resources and workers, etc., etc., but different players are going to score different victory points based on these cards that they gather. And then, of course, there are the specific unique player abilities which will be attached to your player board. And that's pretty much what you get in the game monuments, other than, of course, the box, which I don't have, and the rule book, which I have, but on PDF. So let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and reset the game for two players, which is already halfway set up for two players over here. As you can see, there's another part of the board which I'm not using with two additional monuments, whether it be uh, Takal or this, uh, I think it's like an Az tech monument. So we're not going to be using this side of the board in two-player game. It's mainly for a four-player game. So we'll show you this side of the board, then we'll show you the player boards on this side, how to set the game up, how turns are going to go, and then of course how you win and how you score points in the game Monuments. I've just finished setting up the two-player version of the game Monuments, minus one player's player board. However, I do have their little structures and whatnot set aside to give you an idea of what it would look like with additional players, as well as, of course, I have their units set aside based on their starting units, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, additionally, these will not be there. Like I said previously, they'll actually be attached to the board, but for right now, these are rivers, which means you can't go over them when you're moving unless you build a bridge over them, which is kind of cute. You can build these little bridges right over there. Uh, regardless, after you've chosen your location, so red's here and orange is here, this is where your monument is going to be built. You'll place three workers there, and then you're going to choose two locations to place one resource on each of the locations based on the resource type indicated on the location. There are in these little hexagonal areas. So this has got the wheat, you've got the cattle here, you've got the metal here, cattle, wheat, uh, so on and so forth. There's wood over there. And same for over here. So both of them have already chosen their cattle and their wheat to place there. Also set aside your bonus cards. These you'll be getting throughout the game as you upgrade your monument. Uh, you're going to have quest cards as well. You're going to choose from the starting quest deck, two of them, and pick one of them, discard the other, and place the starting quest in your quest in progress. This one simply says to control two copies of each resource and have four workers. And when you complete this, you'll simply go ahead and put it into your complete quest area. You can do it anytime on your turn. Additionally, you've got your victory point counter put on your scorecard area, which is going to indicate a unique type of scoring method for the game, as well as your starting supply and your personal bonus deck. For your starting supply, you're just going to simply set aside whatever it says to set aside. One town, an army, and an air force. So these three are going to be set aside. We won't be using them unless a card allows us to in the game. This is our general supply pool, which we can use to build, except for certain things like military units, where you'll actually need bonus cards in order to build them. After you've gone ahead and set aside the specific required uh, tokens and or uh, the meeples, then you're going to go ahead and remove this card here. And then you're going to have this little uh, handy dandy bonus player ability. This one here lets me build horses. It's a unique thing that only I can do, whereas there are other ones that let you do different things, which we'll talk about in the review portion. Then you're pretty much ready to go. Go ahead and select a starting player, and this is the little crown to indicate the starting player, and make sure that that player all players have their monument handy with all five of the different levels. So you've got one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one right here, five. And the game can begin. You're going to take your personal deck here, which everyone is going to get, and make sure everything else is set in a pool that you can go ahead and grasp. They're going to have the special ability, special bonus buildings. You're going to have your bridges and then your weapons, which are kind of neutral things. And then, of course, all the resources and your boats, which are also neutral as well. This is the hand of cards you're getting, and these are action cards that will let you basically do the things you want to do on your turn. And the way it's going to work in the game is at the beginning of your turn, you'll choose one of these cards here, and then you will play it. When you play it, you do what it says, and after you've done what it says, you set it aside, and then the next player will get to go using the cards in their hand, play an action, and set it aside. Eventually, you're going to run out of cards, and when you do, instead of playing a card in your hand, you can choose to return cards from the pool that you played them previously back to your hand. You could do this after you've played two cards, one, it doesn't really matter, you can play out your entire hand, but eventually you're going to have to get the cards back in order to use actions once again. So for instance, if I wanted to use a trade action and on my next turn, I wanted to get that trade action back, I'd have to bring it back to my hand at the loss of a turn. So when you do, do uh, choose to bring these back, make sure it's for a good reason. 
Uh, and that's pretty much how the game goes up until the point where you build your fifth monument. So let's go ahead and talk about what you can do in the game. And we'll do the ones that I think are the most relevant. I'll talk about how they, they function first. And the first one you always have to do is movement. And movement allows you to move up to two units one space or their movement value which is to begin with one and it can increase on bonus levels and so if you played this card here you can move up to two units one space which hopefully you've placed your resources close by and you can move those two units one space each the upgrade for this is you can move up to three units their movement value if this card is turned this way you can play this like this and move three instead of two and then you're gonna have things like production Production will allow you to basically produce on up to two tiles. Producing is going to allow a specific location or locations to produce their natural resource based on how many units you have there, as well as how many of the factories you have there. So right now, if I chose produce as my next action because I went, I did my movement, the next player went, now it's back to my turn, I choose to do production, I can then produce on these two locations, thusly giving me one wheat here and then giving me one cattle over here. It's a good way to gather resources to then be able to build buildings and whatnot, which tells you right here how much everything costs. Uh, speaking of building buildings, let's go ahead and talk about that next. Building buildings. You can build a building or repair a building that's been destroyed because at certain times during the game, uh, you're going to basically drop that over like that, and that means it's been destroyed, but you can repair it uh, with the build a building action. So, uh, as you can see, the build a building is going to allow you to build a building on a location with one of your guys here. So, for instance, if I wanted to build something like, oh, I don't know, how about a town? It will cost me one cattle, and it will cost me two food. So, okay, I guess the wheat is food, so I'll do it, and I would take these, I would take this, and return it to the supply pool, and then I can go ahead and build a, uh, a town. Now, there is also additional cost to build uh, to build uh, more workers, which I'll talk about in a second, but building a town, placing out any of the one workers, and then I it would be done. That'd be my build a building action. The next player would then get, get a chance to go. Oh, I selected the wrong building. It's technically going to be a red one. The next player would get a chance to go, and then it'd be my turn again. I could do something like populate. However, in order to populate, I have to actually have two units next to my town. And when I, can, when I do that by using my populate action, I will be able to produce another worker. And populate, when it first starts off, says you can place one of your towns with at least two workers, uh, one worker onto one of your towns with one worker, uh, or two with two workers. And then with the upgrade ability, it will let you do that with two. Moving on, we're going to have stuff like upgrading a card. To upgrade a card, you simply will pay the cost of the upgrade, and every card has its upgrade cost on it. Two cattle, one, two metal, one cattle, one metal, so on and so forth. You would pay the cost of that, then you would flip it over. In order to have resources, you just need to have your workers be on that location with resources. So right now, the only thing that we control here is one cattle, and with orange here, we only control, uh, control nothing, but we could control at least one food and one cattle, right? And so basically that's how you're going to be using resources. And uh, for the most part, that's how the game's going to function. So we've talked about, we talked about building a building, how to upgrade a card. We talked about production, movement. And now we've got a couple other unique ones here to talk about. So for instance, we have attack. And to attack, you'll have to play this card, have a unit that's adjacent to another enemy unit, and then you're going to roll dice and attack uh, based on your power level. And power level will be determined on this chart here. Workers won't have power unless they have a weapon. Soldiers will have a certain amount of power. You naval ships will have a certain amount of power in the in the sea, so on and so forth. And basically, you'll roll the die, your opponent will roll the die, and whoever has the most will subtract that power from their opponent's army. Drawing quest cards. Based on your monument's level, you're going to be able to draw quest cards. And right now, if we were to play that card, we could draw two of these and have to keep at least one. These are basically more powerful or better quests. will give us more victory points at the end of the game, depending on if we can complete them. So this one, has, you have to have a coastal town. You have to have at least two completed quests. So if we did that action, we simply take two of these, keep at least one, or in this case, maybe I'll keep two, and then that would be it for that. Trading will allow us to trade resources from the supply for two to one, or if you had the upgrade, it could be one to one. So a training a special unit, which is technically a military unit, will let us train stuff like our airplanes, will let us train things like our boats, and then, of course, our armies as well and then the final thing is building your monument and probably the most important thing when you build a monument it's going to be a cost over here it'll tell you in order to build what layer how many areas you must control that are not the space here or this ice area over here 
It will tell you how much wood, food, metal, and cattle you will need, as well as how many workers you have to actually remove from the game board in order to produce that specific monument layer. When you build a monument layer, after you uh, have the resources as well as the population to do so and the locations, you'll place your first monument layer on the board. And you'll get a bonus. This is the personal bonus deck. You'll flip this over. You'll get whatever one of the three things you choose here. You'll discard this. Then you're going to go ahead and select the bonus level deck based on your layer. Choose one of those cards and put it in your level one bonus area. And then you'll do the same for two, three, and level four as well. And these will stay here for other players to gather. Now, the faster you build your monument, the better odds of getting the cards you want from this area and these cards will actually let you build things like special units you're allowed to train a special unit and special units are air force army and boats you can't train those unless you have this specific bonus level additionally when you do choose to build special units you'll actually have to remove workers from the board one for one for each one that you choose to build and that's pretty much the idea of the game. You're going to keep progressing. You're going to keep building outward. You're going to be using things like these forts, which will have defenses on them. You'll be using these buildings here that let you populate. You'll be using these factories here, where if you do have one on a location where you choose to produce, you'll produce one for each worker and then an additional one for having a factory. And of course, I keep choosing the wrong color, but I think you get the idea. So if I have these workers here, you can go ahead and place a factory on here, or maybe here, in fact. And then when you go ahead and produce, the max amount of production you can do is three for each location. So in this instance, you've got one plus one and a bonus, which is three. And this has three units on it, which will produce three of these guys here. And if you had the upgraded ability to produce, you could choose another location as long as you had a worker on it to produce more resources. But I think you get the idea. Uh, planes are able to travel across this icy area here, as well as over the sea. Then you're going to have ships and ships will let you go ahead and go through from harbor to harbor across the water area. If you want to have your characters or your workers cross the ocean, so for instance, maybe if this player ended up being able to build a bridge by spending the resources, they could then go across the ocean, this, this bridge here, and then they could build a boat here, and then they'll be able to move and they'll actually be able to move their boat across. Now in a two-player game, you ignore this island, but this one is actually still fair game. So there's certain rules and regulations as to what spaces in the board are limited based on the number of players. But you can also hold up to, I believe, two units on here, whether they're the army slash military or whether they're just simply your workers. However, these boats are neutral. So if you lose them or you don't use them, somebody else can sneak aboard somehow <laughs> and then have access to moving across the uh, sea as well. And that's pretty much it. After somebody is able to build their entire monument from level one, two, three, and then four, and their final little layer here, they're then going to trigger the end game to which everybody is going to get uh, a turn up to the first player. And then you're going to score points and you're gonna score victory points per your card here. And this says six victory points for each monument layer. You're gonna get a bonus if you have the fifth floor. You'll get one victory point for every three resources. And there's also gonna be an up and down victory point thing. And in this case, it gives you one victory point for every three workers. Whereas another one might give you one victory point for every uh, for every two workers. So this is the down as opposed to the up. And then you get one victory point for every land area that you control, one for every three military power you have, and all the units have different power based on whether they have weapons or whether you have uh, different boats or ships and whatnot. Then you're gonna get points for having duplicates of army, navy, air force, and weapons. Points for upgrade cards, as well as your completed quests. And you're going to lose points for uncompleted quests. So you have to be careful not to have these at the end of the game. And remember, you, as long as you complete them, you'll simply flip them over and put them in the completed area, which will score you victory points. Otherwise, they're going to score you negative points in the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You're going to be building, surrounding, moving in, and invading. It feels a little bit like Risk, a little bit like Civ Five attached to a board game. I think you get the basic idea of it. There's probably a few things I could have probably left out, and I didn't show you how the board looks when it's fully set up. Maybe I'll have a picture or something. But that's the gist of playing Monuments. Let's come up and talk about it. Let's go ahead and get into this review now. And as you can see, I actually have the Monuments represented over here. There's the four of them that are available. However, the game might introduce new monuments monuments or even a larger expansion for up to five or six players it might be on this kickstarter might be on another one but i could easily see them adding more to this game and allowing additional players to play then uh i want to actually talk about 
some of the cards. I want to talk about uh, how the game functions, and we'll get into more of my review section, which I guess is just kind of my review. But there are certain things that I think you guys should know about this game and what you should be doing first, and I think that's important for those of you interested in picking up the game. Movement is very, very important. It's what it's going to allow you to control spaces on the board, and it's also what's going to allow you to move your workers onto locations that have resources that you can then produce with and utilize those resources. If you don't have workers on a space that has resources, you can't use those resources. And in fact, somebody else will come along, take that space and gain those resources. Production. This is important. This is what produces the resources in the game. So it's probably going to be your first two actions that you're going to do. That, of course, is going to be based on what buildings you have in the location and how many workers. Populate. That's going to give you more workers. Now, yes, you have to build a specific location like a like a town or whatever and then you're also going to have a worker or two workers on that area and then you can produce a worker but having those is going to let you control more area it's going to let you remove them to add new units that are special that do more damage that do more attacking aspects so production and populate are very 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 important building a building these are going to be dependent on what you want to build. Now, do you want to build more towns to get more units? Do you want to build the forts to let you, you defend yourself? You'll get bonuses to defense or to attack on your power in specific locations where you build them. There are unique buildings for the different players that will do certain things, uh, as well as there's also the horses for another unique player as well. Upgrading cards. This is key as well. Upgrading cards soon is better than upgrading them later because they give you discounts. Even upgrading the upgrade will give you a discount to upgrading cards, which is useful as well. Building your monument, of course, the most important thing in the game, but something that you need to strive towards slowly. Don't just simply try and do it as, as fast as you possibly can, because then you can be out-resourced, out-manned, and out-maneuvered, and if you're playing with more than two players, you can be in a lot of trouble by just trying to push the game to its end. This is not one of those games where you can speedily get across the finish line, unless people are really not paying attention to you and you're using a lot of defensive tactics. Training a special unit. These units can't be trained unless you have specific cards in order to gain, and depending on how soon you build your monument, monument will determine whether you can actually use defensive units or aggressive units, such as the soldiers and the ships and the boats and all that kind of stuff, so the planes and the boats and stuff. And they also cost population to use them, so use them sparingly to begin with, and then progressively use them, especially if you want to be aggressive. Trading is something I didn't use too much, but when I did need to use it, it was very useful. Drawing quest cards is very important as well. It's what helps you win the game. You don't actually have to build all of your monument to five to win the game. And in fact, it's not going to guarantee you a win if you do choose to end the game that way. Quest cards give you the most points throughout the game if you keep drawing them, because as you complete them, you're going to get one, two, and maybe even three victory points. And then finally, attack. This is something you're going to have to do in the game, whether you want to or not, because you're going to need to control at least one or two areas of your opponent's land in order to get that last and final monument, unless you're playing defensive and somebody else takes control of another player's land, which can be useful as well, and is a tactic, to which will end the game and you'll score points. What's also nice about this game, which I, somewhere, here it is, I have a little scoreboard here, which I didn't talk about too much, but it has the player name, the victory points, and all of the different things you're going to calculate when scoring victory points. This is very useful to the game, and I think it's a very, it's a must-have and a good addition, even for the prototype for us specifically. The fact that the different player boards have unique starting player abilities, have unique setups, and have their own deck of upgrades that you can get, as well as when you build monuments, you can then choose from a pool that everyone can select from based on who builds faster is also really unique you're never going to play the same game twice you don't have to select the same location but if you do it doesn't matter it could change the way you're playing the game regardless but overall this feels like a full civ game and it's one of my favorite civ games if not my current favorite i really 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 enjoy this game you do feel like you're building you do feel like you're controlling more area i'm not a big fan of attacking specifically in civ games or even in most games in general this game has a die rolling mechanic where if i have three units and they're both worth two power i have six power and if you have one unit and you he's got three power you have got three i'll roll my six die you'll roll your three and then whoever has the most point value is the one who will win and you'll subtract the power from the loser and they'll remove units and if they only have one unit, then they lose that unit completely, regardless of the power. So it's you can get kind of screwed if you're not careful when choosing how to fight and using your tactics and battle plans wisely. If you like aggressive combat and, and the power, you have that opportunity to do that. This is not like Risk, where you must attack, 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 attack. This, you have options as to how you want to win the game, to play the game your way, which is what I really like about the game. 
quality of the components is very, very nice for a prototype. I'm very excited to see what the board looks like overall. I'm excited to see the rivers attached to the boards. I like all the different resources and all the different army units and all that kind of stuff. I think it works very well. It looks a little cluttered, but mainly just because this is a prototype and all the extra pieces that won't be associated or will probably be changed to make the game more functional. I've seen their previous two games, like Tour Operator, and this one does a very good job. I can imagine what this game is going to look like. They've done a really good job as far as sending out their games to their backers so i wouldn't be worried about that as well overall it's a very fun game i really enjoyed it my only nitpick is the combat but that's not really necessarily a negative for the game it's just more of a personal preference as to i don't want to attack and i don't like the randomness of the die because there are blank sides to the die but overall it's a heck of a lot of fun i strongly strongly suggest you take a look at this game thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment as well as taking a look at our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts give Giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. We're giving away a game on my CMON right now. Go ahead and pick it up if it's still available. Oh, one little thing too, I forgot. These boats, they're neutral. And if you build one as an action and your opponent puts their units on it, you've lost it. So you need to make sure you build these in the right areas. That made me a little frustrated, but it was my own personal misstep. So build them correctly. As well as check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek. Uh, show me how to win before you play. They're all great people and they have a ton of great content that you can go ahead and check even more than my own site. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to building a monument with you next time. I built a monument.